So today we are going to be breaking down how I make money on the internet and how we make money in general, which is only the most personal subject that you can get into on the internet. Except for uh, sex, obviously. Telling. <laughs> That's... This is not our sex tape. <laughs> no. <laughs> Title of your sex tape. <laughs> hey team, welcome back to another Levi's Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. Today, Leah and I are going to be breaking down how we make money and how I make money specifically with a channel with over 100,000 subscribers. Now, this is not going to be uh, a typical video that you would see here on this channel. As you know, if you have been a subscriber here for a while, I talk about the incredible ways that you can live a great life that is also great for the planet as well. But when we did our live stream a couple weeks ago, a lot of you said that you'd be interested in hearing about how we make money, particularly how Levi makes money as a YouTuber. And since we're talking about money today, I have to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare. So if you are just here for the numbers, here they are. Last year, I made $50,000 off of my YouTube channel before taxes. And I made a lot less than that. I was fortunate though, I got a scholarship which was able to uh, pay for a lot of my monthly expenses, but I also work on different grant projects as a teaching assistant and all of that while uh, finishing my PhD. Now once you take off expenses and taxes, I'm really only clearing about $35,000 a year. So between the two of us as a household, we don't actually make a ton of money. Don't forget, Levi is also a 1% for the Planet member, meaning that he is the only YouTube channel, right, still? Yeah, yeah. That is a 1% for the Planet member. So that's a certain amount of money every year goes towards them. So for last year, I gave 1% of that $50,000 to the Rainforest Trust in response to the wildfires that happened there in the Amazon. Now, before we get into the specifics of how we make our money, we're gonna talk a bit about our lifestyle and how we make a relatively average earning a really awesome life. So right off top, we have to say that we are super lucky. Uh, we both graduated from university and we don't have any student loan debt. That's pretty huge. Um, even in like Canada, but especially in the United States, student loan debt is huge and is such a has a major impact on people. We are debt free for a number of reasons. And probably number one is because we worked throughout our university career. So I started working as a bartender and server when I was 19. So I spent almost 10 years uh, working in hotels, restaurants, bars, and even running my own uh, wedding bartending business. We worked in the service industry up until last year, actually. We both That's worked at a Marriott hotel just across the street from where we live. Yep, I was a banquet server, Levi was a bell person. But now we are done school. We're no longer paying tuition and we're making more money than we ever have. But we're still very thrifty about how we spend our money. What we do spend our money on is food. <laughs> we eat really well. We love to cook and you can see from a variety of videos about our kitchen and all of the food that we're making uh, that we try and eat as local, organic, zero waste and plant-based. We also like to buy local craft beer, we buy nice wine, we indulge in good spirits <laughs> and uh, we're not worried to go out on the town and buy a nice meal and have a glass of wine with it, which previous to Leah was something that I was totally opposed to. I was the guy who would go to a dinner party at a restaurant and I would order a plate of fries and just eat that because I was so afraid of spending money. And a glass of water. You've corrupted my true Mennonite roots. <laughs> I like to enjoy things. She's very good at enjoying things. Leah, how did you make that sexual again? I didn't mean to. Oh my God. I live a life of pleasure. <laughs> I'm it. talking about food and wine, Levi. You're the one that took it there. God. God. But to balance these things out, we don't own a lot of extraneous things. Minimalism was sort of forced upon us because we live in a tiny apartment, but we also try to limit the amount of stuff that we own. So that means we don't have a lot of clothes. I mean, you saw Levi's thing about the t-shirts. He's been wearing those same three shirts for over three months. We also don't own a car, which saves us about $3,000 a year at least. 
If you wanna see a full video on what it's like for us to live without a car in North America, we've made a whole video about that, which you can find down in the description. But since you're here to talk about money, let's break down how I make my living as a full-time YouTuber. You don't need me for this, do you? Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just gonna go upstairs. Oh, I'm gonna stay here. So this channel recently broke 100,000 subscribers, and that's an amazing accomplishment for any channel, but I think people have a misconception of how much money a channel like this can actually make. 2019 was the first year that I actually figured out how to make any money on this channel, and it was a really tough learning curve. So that means for the first year of this channel's existence, I was uploading a video every single week and making no money. So the numbers that we're going to be talking about today are the numbers for my 2019 tax year. While I'm not going to be showing you all of the documents, these are the rough numbers for my channel. And if you don't believe me, too bad. <laughs> so let's start with AdSense. AdSense, which you're probably aware of, is Google's way of monetizing your videos within the YouTube platform. Basically, every single ad that you see before one of my videos, I get a small percentage of each view and click. It ranges quite a bit and there's been massive blowouts in the past where creators have been hit really hard from things like the adpocalypse. As you can see from the screen grab back in November, I was doing really well off of AdSense. I made about $1,700 in that month. Today on April 17th, I am sitting at less than 300. Number two is sponsorships. This was the bulk of my income in 2019, and it was actually the first year that I'd ever done them. Sponsorships are pretty straightforward. Basically, a company gives me money to talk about their product or service in videos like this. Now on this channel, I try my best to partner with brands and companies that are sustainable or with digital online platforms that don't promote mindless consumerism. For example, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you are not familiar with what Skillshare is, it's an online learning platform where you get the opportunity to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are literally thousands of classes on Skillshare for people who are ready to learn new stuff. Skillshare has actually been a great sponsor for this channel, and we're going to be doing a series of five sponsored videos over the next five months. This is huge for a creator to have a consistent source of income coming in month after month. And the best part is the service that I'm being paid to promote can actually help people. You could learn how to draw or how to bake, Leah and I have been really getting into sourdough lately, if you've seen anything on our Instagram accounts lately. But you can also gain new skills to help develop your career down the road. I am a YouTuber now, and I would not be able to do what I'm doing if I didn't know how to make videos. Now, of course, making videos is really fun, but I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way. You're not going to be a YouTuber for very long if you can't monetize the thing that you're doing, no matter how noble your cause might be. Fortunately, Skillshare has a whole fleet of video content about entrepreneurialism and business so that you can create the kind of content that you wanna create, but monetize it effectively so that you can still eat and live in a house. One of the courses that I wish that I had access to when I started this whole YouTube thing is a course called The Art of the Start, turning an idea into a high growth business. And this is something that a lot of people don't get past. They have a great idea and they have no idea how to start it. So if you are interested in starting something new, head down to the description where you can get a free two month premium Skillshare membership just by being a part of the team. Number three is affiliate marketing. A lot of creators make money by commission on sales of a particular product. On this channel, I have affiliate links in the description to Tushy Bidets, Leaf Shave Razor, Sunski Sunglasses, and Pila Case Cell Phone Cases. I have specifically chosen all of these affiliate links because they are companies that I genuinely believe are helping people to live more sustainable lives. Number four, speaking gigs. 
As a creator, a lot of my time is spent talking to a camera in my bedroom to thousands of people that I've never actually met in person. And rarely, but sometimes, I get the chance to talk to a group of people, and that's massive for me. Now in 2019, this was a very, very small part of my income, but it was one of the most memorable parts of my job. Number five is Patreon. Starting my Patreon was, I think, a really big step for me as a creator because it changed my relationship to my audience. I know for a lot of creators and myself included, it is very difficult to ask your audience for their support. But Patreon also means a different thing. If more and more of my income comes from the people who actually watch and support what I do, then that means that the content that I create will reflect that demographic of people rather than the companies that I choose to work with. Last year, Patreon was an absolutely minimal component of my income because I felt really self-conscious about it. I didn't want to promote it. My hope is that in the future, Patreon can be a bigger part of how I make my money because I think that it aligns more with the channel values that I have here on this platform. Whew, talking about money is getting me so sweaty right now. Let's head back downstairs. <clears throat> Now the reality is a whole bunch of people are not making as much money as they were previous to COVID-19. And I want to emphasize that no one should start a YouTube channel right now in the hopes of making money. I don't get sick days. I don't get holidays. I don't really get any sort of time off unless I can convince myself that I deserve it, which I have a lot of trouble doing. Now, I know many of you may be thinking that this video doesn't have anything to do with saving the planet, but I would argue that it does. How you make money and your ability to make money directly impacts whether or not you have the willpower to care about the environment. If you're starving or you're financially insecure, you're not gonna care about the sake of the planet. So I hope that maybe seeing how I manage my finances has helped you or given you some inspiration, but I would love it if people could leave comments down below of how they manage to live a sustainable life within their financial means, because I think this is really important for everyone to have a conversation about. But if you are a part of the team and you've hit that subscribe button, I wanna thank you for showing up today and spending some time with me and Leah, because I know that we really appreciate it. And we will see you in the next one.